Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I want to take just a minute to tell you about our 10-day challenge on the DRL simulator, so stay tuned. DRL for a couple of years now and I really enjoy it so when my dad introduced me to the DRL simulator I thought it would be a blast I tried it out and I played about 45 minutes and it's super fun so over the next 10 days I've decided that I'm gonna play one hour each day just to see how good I can get over these 10 days I'm gonna be using the Tyrannus from Free Sky and it's connected to our um, Mac here so let's fire it up and this is day one I've played this for um, probably 45 minutes total and basically I only play in beginner mode. There's three modes, beginner, intermediate, and pro mode. My dad really likes pro mode, I really like beginner mode, but I hope by the end of these 10 days I should be at least comfortable in pro mode, but we'll see. Okay, so our first map is going to be walk in the park, I'm on beginner mode, and here we go. I need to rename this map because it is not a walk in the park. This is beginner mode with a pretty small and not crazy fast drone. And I am somewhat comfortable, I would say, with this map and difficulty level. So one of the things I really like is how they have a feature where if you mess up, which I often do, you can just hit this button right here and it'll take you and put you in a perfect position for the next obstacle. It's kind of like a reset button. So as far as a first race goes, I would say that was pretty rough, but we're here to improve. So to keep track of my progress, I'm going to write down every race and every time that I get to uh, see how much I can improve over these 10 days. I've done three races in Walk in the Park on beginner mode. So I figured I'd try intermediate mode and just see if I can go slow and steady and make it through this course. So let's go. This is stability off, altitude hold off, and angle limiter, but the angle limiter's on. Okay. Okay. Okay, just missed that, and I'm tipping over. There you go. Now how do I... So much more. Ah. Uh. So I've been playing in intermediate for probably like 20 minutes now, and it is um, a lot, a lot harder than beginner. I mean, even just going straight into one of them is. Okay, 
So day one is over. I did about 40 minutes in beginner mode and about 20 minutes in intermediate mode. And I would say that overall I've made pretty big improvement in intermediate mode. I used to just turn it on and crash immediately. Now I can go through trees, go through um, bigger obstacles, but I would say I'm still a ways off from being comfortable. And yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. See how much better I can get then. Day two. Welcome to Open TX. Switch warning. So yesterday was day one of the 10 day challenge, today is day two, and um, yesterday I got a bit more comfortable in medium mode, and today I'm just going to try to keep working at it and see if I can finish a race in medium mode. Here we go. So I'm doing a walk in the park to start off because it has a lot of wide open space, I probably won't crash into anything, but it also has some trees that I can use as uh, obstacles. Here we go. So yesterday when we started this challenge, um, I would put it in intermediate mode and basically just immediately crash. Now I'm able to jump in and fly around these trees without crashing too much. And that's just after one hour, so hopefully by the end I'm gonna have some real skill. Day two is over. I spent most of today um, in freestyle mode, just getting better at intermediate mode. See you tomorrow for day three. Welcome to Open TX. Switch warning. Thank you for welcoming me. Alrighty, we're here for day three. Yesterday I got 424 on. Um, the field, so today I'm gonna see if I can improve that score. And that was in intermediate mode too, so. Let's do it. All right. Oh goodness, no, it's a good start. Now we're gone. Nice, that was good. Alrighty, it's the end of day three and um, yesterday I did the field, which is a uh, an easy course, in uh, four minutes and 24 seconds. But today, the last one I did, three minutes and 17 seconds so definitely improving those are both in intermediate mode um, let's see what we can do on day four alrighty let's get started with day four um, today I'm just gonna focus on getting my times down in medium and then see if I can work my way up to pro tomorrow Okay, we are officially halfway done, and um, I think my improvement has just been crazy, honestly. I didn't think in five days I would be able to complete a course on intermediate mode without crashing once, but we did that today. We set some new personal bests in intermediate mode, and um, yeah, same thing tomorrow. Let's just see what we can do. What day is it? Today is day six. Right. So it's day six, and today I think I'm going to spend most of the time in pro mode, getting used to it, just trying some new courses. So yeah. Welcome to Open TX. Why do you like the shipyard? Um, it has really cool scenery and. Some of the obstacles are more difficult and some of them are easier. Like the beginning ones are easier so you can kind of ease into it. Oh. 
Okay. I think flying through these um crates is really fun. Alrighty, day six is over. We went for an hour and twenty minutes today in uh pretty much completely pro mode and I feel a lot better about it, so I'll see you on day seven. Alrighty y'all, it's time for day seven and today I'm gonna spend all day in pro mode just doing different courses, doing different races, trying to get faster in pro. So let's go. Welcome to Open TX. Okay, day seven is over, and as promised, I spent the entire hour in pro mode, and I got a lot more comfortable in pro mode, set some new records, and I'll see you on day eight. Day eight, yesterday we did a ton of pro mode flying, set a lot of new personal bests, and let's continue the pro mode, and um, see if we can get more personal bests on some maps we haven't tried yet. Welcome to Open TX. I mean, think of all the other things I can get this good at if I just did an hour a day for a week. And boom. So just in my first race back on, I got a 215 something and now Second race back on, I got a 146 and set the new personal best. So yeah. Number 512. 512, I still have a long way to go. I bet the difference between 146 and 145 is like 100 spots. I think I've gotten to the point where it's actually hard to break a record. Um, I actually have to have a good run to break a record, you know? and the amount that I'm breaking them by is a lot less. Like, yesterday I, I broke a bunch of records by 10, 20 seconds, and today, if I broke one, it was by five, six seconds or less. All right, everybody, it is day nine, uh, second to last day of this 10-day challenge, and um, today I'm gonna just put it in pro mode and go as fast as possible. Okay, so day nine. Today I just um, I did some different courses. I set some new records. I got a 105 on Shipyard. I tried some different drones actually today, which was a lot of fun. I haven't experimented a lot with different drones in the in the game, but yeah, this thing is almost over, and I really can't believe how far I've come. Alrighty, everybody, day ten. Here we go. Okay, so one thing about this game is. Even when you feel like you've mastered it, there's still somebody that's higher on the leaderboard than you. Still somebody that's challenging you. And if there's not, then you have yourself. You want to beat your personal best. And right now, that's the phase I'm in. I've basically got, got most of the tricks up my sleeve. I'm just focused on 
beating every personal best on all of my favorite maps. Like, do you see what I'm saying? How do you do that quickly? Well, I don't think you do. Right? Ah! By the way, we've kept a log of every single race we've done over these 10 days. So yeah, we've been well documented. If you're planning on playing The Sim and you're trying to get better at FTV, I have five tips to share with you. Number one. Take it slow at first. In the beginning, I just wanted to go fast. I was like, this is a racing game. Why would I go slow? By going slow, I was able to master skills that I could never have learned if I was going fast, such as using the yaw and the roll together to more effectively turn. My next tip is go into freestyle mode and just try to hit big gaps. Don't worry about going fast. Don't worry about squeezing your way into little tiny gaps. Just aim for gaps between trees, gaps between buildings, anything you can set your mind to and say, I'm gonna fly in between there. As you do that, you can make the gaps progressively smaller and smaller and then put it into race mode and see how much you've improved. My next tip is pick one course that you absolutely love and do that one every single day. Mine was shipyard and I was able to see how much better I was getting because in the beginning it took me like six minutes to get around and by the end I could do it in under a minute. Another nice part about that is that you can concentrate on your flying instead of what's coming around the next corner because you already know the map. In addition to the racing, there are tons of things to do in the DRL sim, such as a workbench to build your favorite drone, you can tweak the settings on your favorite controller, there's training, there's freestyling, there's tons of hours of content in the sim for you to try out and I highly suggest you try out everything you can. In the beginning, I had no idea that you could change the drone that you want to use and I was stuck on one that I really wasn't too happy with. So then when I discovered you can actually change the drone that you race with, I was thrilled and I found one that worked for me and I never went back. My next and final tip is get out of beginner mode as soon as possible. The first time I tried it, I started off in beginner mode and I was pretty comfortable in beginner mode. So I really saw no point of changing to intermediate or even pro. As soon as I would put it in intermediate, I would just crash straight away. So going into pro mode at first is not fun at all, honestly. You just crash and you have to restart and yeah, it's not a good time. But after about an hour, an hour and a half, when you get the hang of it, it is super fun and you'll never wanna go back to beginner. So some advantages of pro mode are that you can dive straight down or straight up, you can flip, you can roll, you can do pretty much anything your heart desires and it is way more fun than beginner once you get the hang of it. So in conclusion, my five tips for you if you're playing the DRL sim are to go slow at first, take your time, get better, then try to go fast, hit big gaps in freestyle mode, and pick a course that you love and make that your favorite course, play it every day, track your progress on that course and become a master at it. Um, try different drones and setups, tweak your settings, tweak your drone, do what you got to do to find what's right for you. And lastly, get out of beginner mode, go to pro as soon as possible. In the beginning, when my dad told me about this challenge, I wasn't so sure that I was going to like the game. Um, he's really into drones. I was never super into them. But um, after about two days, when I started getting comfortable in pro mode, just a world of opportunity opened up. and. It was so much fun. I fell in love with the game and after the 10 days, I'm definitely gonna play it more. And now that I can beat all his times, maybe he'll let me fly some of his racing drones.
Chilla. Chilla. 